the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Forever you will be The Lamb upon the throne I gladly bow my knee Sing it unto the Lord It's not a special number Forever you will be Just, just pray, talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm very serious with you. This business of kingdom life, I take it seriously. For those of you who are not serious with him, tell him, Lord, tonight you have my heart. Whether you are a pastor, you are a pope, you are a bishop, pray. Talk to the Lord. His presence is in this place. Tell him, Lord, I'm serious. I don't plan to be serious for just two years. Or until my husband or wife comes. Or until I'm ordained a pastor. Or until I have a parish. <laughs> Come on, pray. And say, Lord, even if you stop answering my prayers, I cannot leave you. If you stop blessing me, I cannot leave you. Make sure you are praying. Lord, if you strip off the anointing for my life, I will still follow you. I love you more than anointing. I love you more than ministry. If no one else comes for koinonia, I will still love you. I will still serve you. I will still pour out my heart and my all. This is part of koinonia. The message has begun. Make a commitment. The Lord will honor the commitment that you're making. For many of you, he's replacing the heart of stone with a heart of flesh. Where the things of the kingdom no longer become a burden. Lord, you have my heart. This is for sure. You have my heart. You have my heart. You have my life. You have my life. Everything. 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 The skill. The grace. The wisdom. still praying pray don't open your eyes and looking at your neighbor none of your business with what he's saying just focus just focus and pray 
Don't be looking at me or your neighbor. Make sure you are talking. If you don't know what to say, keep quiet. Yes. This is how generals are made. You will remember this commitment because he will remind you in the future. When you become a millionaire, he will remind you. When you are having one million man crusade, he will remind you. I assure you. When you are about to collect that bribe, he will remind you. When you are about to give yourself to serve Baal, he will remind you. I assure you, you will not forget this commitment. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. You're dedicating your life. Oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you. Everything belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. This is the kind of Christianity that was practiced by the apostles. Unconditional Christianity. Not God give me a car and I will love you. Not buy me a bicycle and I will become your servant. That is a doctrine that came from the pit of hell. And Lord, I know you will bless me. But I love you more than the blessing. It all belongs to you. the kind of people that will walk in the new wine of the spirit these are the kinds of people that will walk in the levels of grace of prosperity of power of influence men who have surrendered their hearts not just their hands who have surrendered their gifting who have committed their all say Lord make me the celebrity and I will not be ashamed to declare your praises that you will not get to the point where the stupidity and the foolishness of honor that turns the great to become weak you say Lord I love you 
as I rise, I will lift your name. He said, and if I be lifted up, not you, not the apostolic ministry, not ENI, not Koinonia, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. If your gifts lift him up, if your anointing lifts him up, if you consciously hide yourself behind his cross, it does not happen automatically. You must consciously keep yourself. He said, I keep my body under me. He said, Lord, I desire that you alone be lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That we be grounded. That we be built. That we be established in righteousness. Enough of that kind of Christianity. Where in a crowd and a multitude of people. Only less than 10 people are serious with God. And that becomes the pride of the pastor. It's time we begin to shout. Until the least among us become as great as David. Where every one of us can stand by himself and legislate on behalf of the parliament of heaven. Where every one of us can stand for truth and be a voice that declares the word of the Lord in every area of ministry and life. That God will find an ambassador in you. This is our mandate. And we can change this country we can change the continent of Africa and we will because there is an ability beyond us hallelujah praise the Lord now please look up everybody how many of you are being blessed and changed by koinonia in all sincerity the day we stop ministering the word to you God has a right to seize ministry from us because from that time we become showmen and actors on stage hallelujah let me show you something Ephesians chapter 2 I hope that one day when you become a pastor look at me when you become a pastor in future and you make slavery out of your members we will call you and we'll ask you where you learned it from hallelujah the reason why we are careful with our lives many times is so that we do not sow the seed of bondage and corruption in the hearts of many people and so we allow death to walk in us so that life will walk in you hallelujah paul said follow me as i follow after christ run away from all this wrong concept of ministry and concept of glory where you dominate your fellow man in a bit to show you are great the greatest in the kingdom is a servant humility is a revelation it's not an act there is a revelation that keeps you in that state. Hallelujah. Away with that ambition of lording it over people. And have, I fear people that serve me. I've said this thing for years. Till today I'm not able to call people sons and daughters. Because I know how of much of a baby I am in the presence of God. So what is the extent of grace that will make me call someone a son or a daughter? And I run away from these kinds of things. Because I know that anybody that assumes a position of honor will be judged even more. Make sure your priorities are defined about life, about leadership, about ministry. 
kill away the wrong mindsets that we have received where you lord it over people that's not the way of the spirit when the spirit of god finds expression in the life of a man if all you have to show for your yieldedness is that you can blow and people fall down you are still a baby in the spirit hallelujah we must be built and be matured men of character men of grace men of humility hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord all right let me have um please as i make these calls if you belong to this category just run out quickly i will embarrass you let me have someone that knows god is calling him in the place of ministry just one person one god is calling you in the place of music come out quickly as i'm calling just if you are bold and you are confident if you are thinking about it just remain there one person you are what music do you sing but in your other shirt you should leave only one dress properly hallelujah what of you music hold on i just need come i'm not praying we are doing something how okay um music all of you okay don't worry just just go back to your seat appreciate them please i just need one person music mm. okay let's have two of you someone in fashion and design fashion and design quickly who will make sure it's what you are doing not dreaming about yet at least that you have a seed on ground and make sure when you come out here you dress properly don't dress like a hooligan dress like a leader right don't come out with with comb in your pocket and you're laughing no you, are, you dress like you know where you are going don't look like a foolish person it's touts that look like that hallelujah comb your hair you look smart you look like where you are going don't dress like a thief that's why they keep stopping you on the road <laughs> hallelujah all right let's have someone in education education someone who is education anybody you know god is calling you in the area of education please appreciate them as they come someone in family life you know you have a passion family life who is that education family life who is represented okay i will too appreciate her someone in politics and governance you know that there is grace for you in that area make sure you know what you are standing for if you are not sure please go back to your seat hallelujah please come up and face the congregation all of you uh someone in arts and entertainment fashion you're a beauty you are a beauty uh, what do we call it makeup artist beautician where are you oh she looks it no problem just come up you're a pastor why are you laughing you people always think come on pastor beautiful one more person come on celebrate her i like people who are bold and confident hallelujah all right so just group yourself fashion beauty this side next music next your what decoration education two of you beautiful please stand family life politics and governance hallelujah all of you are 10 coin on here right hallelujah okay um sweetheart come now you are a pastor walking in grace you've attended our miracle services right and you've seen the grace of god and as a christian who has been built you have the opportunity to talk in a bereavement now you walk in miracles you walk in signs and wonders but a family has lost their loved one and they just push you as you are now all right with the knowledge of what we have been training the building and everything how would you approach how would you communicate the light of christ and comfort the family make your mistakes don't be afraid this is a training ground nobody i assure you listen 
Nobody will look at you and speak whatever you can. I'm comforting you here. I'm standing by your side. Okay? All right. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Are there living souls here? Praise, praise, praise the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, to me, I'll go to such family because, you know, life without Jesus, if that family are not from, are not maybe, let me say, they don't know much about Christ. Because you cannot just go into a family and just start, you understand. If they don't know about Christ, you first preach Christ to them. Praise the Lord. And also, you cannot do it by your own power. You need God. Praise the living God. Before you go and meet any family, you need to go on your knees. Not only on your knees, you need to go to God. God, I want to go to that family. What do you want me to say? How do you want me to comfort them? Praise the living God. Hallelujah. And with the help of God, you see that God will give you words to say. Praise God. God bless you. Come on, please appreciate her. Yes, we are proud of you. You are learning very well. Hallelujah. That's the life of a minister. You never do things without the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That's all I was looking for. This is what we are teaching you. Are you following me now? How many of you like Koinonia 101? No carryover. No carryover whatsoever. Hallelujah. So that you'll be established. When you step out, you should know that you have been trained. When you graduate from AB, you behave like an Abu Sait. And you know you are smart. You cannot graduate from ABU and behave as if you did not go to school. Hallelujah. So when you are going to a bereaved family, you don't just go arrogantly and go and meet them and say, do you know that we attend miracle service and we are all these kind of things? You are behaving like a child here. If you don't know what to say, what do you do? Keep quiet. There is wisdom in silence. I told you to read the book of Proverbs. The moment you are in the midst of people, especially elderly people, and you don't know what to say, shut your mouth. That's what Elihu did until wisdom came unto him. Hallelujah. Politics and governance. Come, sir. We live in a very corrupt country. Hallelujah. Where every Tom, Dick, and Harry has access to a part of the national treasury. Anybody can loot. Hallelujah. And now you become the chairman of a local government. There's subvention, there's allocation, eh? there's, there's everything for you. And now we have taught you to represent Christ. Assuming you have to address your leaders, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, free thinkers, wicked people, demons, all kinds of people. And now you are supposed to communicate the life of Christ. You have been receiving the teachings here. Listen. If you cannot translate the word that you are receiving here into a practical reality, we have been wasting our time. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sir. Feel free. Express yourself. Praise God. Two minutes. In a country like Nigeria where there is high level of incubation of um, corruption, I, as one, pardon the whole um, pattern of um, bureaucracy and so on and so forth, but there's a need for strategic planning. We saw that in the life of Jesus Christ where he was able to coordinate his disciples in assigning um, respective assignments to them um, all around, you know. And in the same regard, you being able to contend with um, society is another aspect which you need to put into consideration, which Jesus Christ continually was um, faced with um, challenges from the Sadducees and the Pharisees. But consistently, the application of wisdom, which of course didn't just come um, naturally, but he prayed, and actually wisdom was then granted unto him. He was commissioned into his assignment, and so the same will I do. Amen. Okay, so you have not told us what you are going to tell them. So, assuming you are addressing a group of people, what give us one solution that can help to bring good governance in this country we are tired of nonsense speak to us good governance is a active role in key participation everybody has um based on the from a kingdom perspective not social studies <laughs> all right from a kingdom perspective participation 
one major aspect which we need to do is actually not looking at the importance of any office but actually operating with a mindset of humility you just said not quite long ago humility is a revelation it is not um an understanding amen hallelujah and so as a christian when you go into public office it's not for you it's a waiting day for all you have will chop they have they have chopped their own no as a christian you must go with the attitude of servanthood your blessing is tied to the operation of the economy of the kingdom not in looting from the treasury hallelujah and you face a lot of challenges because there are people above you but you must refuse to compromise don't go and steal money and come and lie to us in the church and carry small and say joshua selman this is for you to go on air we will drive you away with it that's why we are believing the word of god for ourselves hallelujah so when we vote you sir make sure you represent christ now i can talk to you but when you get there when you forget one night you will dream of koinonia and you will dream of this warning god will threaten you and say mr man he will do to you what he did to adeboe the day you mess up i will erase you from the ground we are proud of you go and represent the kingdom family life <laughs> hallelujah marriage right now is a union between two things anything a man and a whale a fish and 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 and, and anything a man and a baby i've said it again if you are considering marriage it is paramount that the partner you are thinking about must be of the opposite sex hallelujah it's amazing that the senate in nigeria can be debating gay marriage a man and a man a woman and a woman we call it human rights and that westernization and that nonsense is creeping through films the, is there anybody in media here no media media come on we cannot move without the media who is there we need one person from the media quickly all right family life ma now you are supposed to talk sense into family there's all kinds of things going on a man believes the wife is his slave the wife believes the man is whatever everybody comes with every how do you approach from a kingdom perspective what do you think is the solution to restoring discipline and godliness in america a child is 14 years old the mother says sit down here i'm gonna see you to cut and the child slaps his mother and we call it human rights isn't it and when you get a cane and whip the child we call it all kinds of names i don't plan to beat my children but i plan to discipline them <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, the Bible says that now we have a more sure word of prophecy and we have the Bible to always go back to. Praise the Lord. And um, as Maru said, that when a purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So in the family, everybody has his or her place. Hallelujah. The father, the priest of the home, and then the mother and all that. And um, I know women lately there have been um, women trying to um, is it campaign for their place for their right hallelujah but from the scripture it's it's um, obvious where the place of the woman is where the place of the man is the children and all that so um, what I would do as a person of course seeking having sought for the leadership of the Holy Spirit is to um, bring to the consciousness of the people your place hallelujah as a child as a father as a mother hallelujah and then to trust the holy spirit to lead us hallelujah amen bless you beautiful how many of you are proud of the people this is just a random sampling it's a true proof of whether we are making progress or not hallelujah praise the lord media in five minutes a nation can become 
become drug addicts or, or because a celebrity went on air he was allowed to go on channel o or mtv all right and you see all kinds of things and now we have on youtube ipad everything you can i mean you just need to go on youtube there's everything free pornography how to shoot guns how to kill people now god is sending you to the media you are an apostle to the media what do you think you can do or how do you plan to approach to bring the kingdom thank god for tv stations christian tv stations i think you should appreciate every ministry and every servant of god around the world that has a tv station it's a breath of fresh air in this jungle of babylon every channel you tune into their lies the media people tell lies they are manipulated by government if god gives you a television ministry will you let me be on your tv ministry most definitely sir uh, because you're my teacher and the the main the main reason why the every being was created is to give glory unto god and every invention of man is an extension of the creation of god so if the media was created by man it means that the purpose of the media is to bring glory to god and if it's not glorifying god then the purpose of it has been defeated so most definitely if i get to own a television station when i get to own a television station thank you sir it, it the bible would be the only law that is followed if it is out of the scriptures then it is not existing Hold on. i hope you know that right now on tv stations many tv stations you can't say jesus even god is becoming an issue you must say divine or just something or highest something in the highest whatever it is paper ufos whatever in the highest so how do you plan to come in bluntly do you plan to be very blunt about jesus christ Extremely first of all so that we'll know now whether we need to talk to you or i am extremely blunt about jesus christ and it will be replicated in every institution that is established that the lord used me to establish if we can't say the name of jesus christ on air then there is no business being in the business of media because jesus is the person that we're looking up to he's the being he's the most divine thing he's the creator of the universe he's the creator of the person that created media so most definitely if we cannot revive him on air then we have no business being on air so jesus would be the yardstick for every single thing for an advert to come on air we must first check it what is the implication of this advert on people there are theories that guide the media and these theories have one of the most popular theories in the media is the magic bullet theory that tells you that the media has the power to act exactly the way a bullet pointed at a human being will act that once it shoots you it takes effect immediately uh, that meaning that it has a way of reforming your mindset it has a way of transforming your mindset so we must look at every single content from that perspective is this television program how is it going to affect the people positively or negatively teaching our people how to prepare for war will it affect them positively or negatively showing a news that of something that's happened uh, in somewhere will it affect the people positively or negatively accepting some musical videos will it affect the people positively or negatively if it does not affect the people positively then it cannot go on air because if it does not affect the people positively then it means that it is definitely going to be destroying lives it's going to, it's not only going to be destroying the immediate life that you're seeing but it's going to be destroying generations to come because it's what you have learned today that your seed will replicate so if it is not in the scripture it is not going to be on air yeah. hallelujah this is powerful hallelujah let me tell you something these guys will do what they are talking about they are not pretending it and i like his competence you see him now so you can talk to a group of unbelievers who are media people so we are not just training you to pray in tongues alone there is a place of creativity there is a place of digging deep you know where god is calling you to begin to build and prepare i never knew there was a theory that governs media but this is smart you are learning something right now hallelujah don't just be spiritually braced up you must be competent enough to invade the cosmos 
and bring intelligent presentation of the kingdom how many of you know ravi zacharias one intelligent apologetic he stood and preached before atheists and all kinds of people communicating the wisdom of the word hallelujah education we have all kinds of people students being victimized university of abuja they've asked the students to go and relocate you can imagine after spending years of work because of the corruption of the administration those in final year will have to go and start scouting for universities to start again this is the recent announcement allocations that are sent to the educational sector don't reach everybody chops his own nuc gets his own everybody gets his own there's project from educational tax fund to build universities build roads build all of these things and they are not being effective after five years they build and say 1999 project they do it in 2005 so how do you if you become the vice chancellor of amadu bello university in 2000 and what do what don't you like today that you think you can change quickly one minute praise the lord firstly the bible says he who lacks wisdom let him ask of the lord who give it liberally that's the first thing so if i'm the vice -chanc chancellor i would like all students to know that as as children of god we are ambassadors of heaven that's the first thing we are ambassadors of heaven which means that we are representing god so everybody as long as you ask for the course you want to read in your field god is sending you there to effect a change definitely and god is a god of he he, has, he plans his things right before time so he has seen before you so if you ask definitely of if we ask definitely of god he has sent us to effect a change so if i was a vc and um of abu or whichever school the first thing i will do the very first thing i will do is to bring up programs not only education line because nowadays i found out that okay, for example for example last week i was opportunity to be on a particular program okay a particular program I'm going to bring up is an idea, idea, idea challenge program. Something that can boost up um, students' IQ. So that in the nearest future, they can actually stand on their own and do something independent on their, on their own with God. So that's what I'm going to do. Are you going to increase lecturer salary? hallelujah god bless you thank you education too what do you have to say 20 seconds amen well mine will go to the parts of the students because seriously i think what is eating deep into our educational sector these days is laziness on the part of the students that is we rely on examination my, pra my practice i think that is what that is what pains me most in the part if of become, education. If you become the, the, the what do they call the rector of JAM? Well, as the, if when I become the rector of JAM, I will definitely look for the right ways. But I think being the rector of JAM is really going too far. I'm looking at it in a, in a place whereby before the students come to write exams, who are they actually? Because whatever JAM have in place, it is actually what a student actually is that he goes to do. Because JAM have brought up so many innovations, but exam my practice is the more they bring up new innovations, the more people devise ways. So we have to look for a way that to, to make students know that they can do it on their own. Because what we have now is students who don't really believe in themselves. We believe that you see people come and pray, 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 and at the end of the day you go to the exam hall. After reading that you still go, what was your prayer for in the first place? If you really pray and believe that God is going to answer your prayer, I don't believe we should still go into exam. My prayer. So I'm looking at it in a personal way. As a student, look at it that you can do it with the help of God. If you can pray to God and read your books, you can do it on your own. Hallelujah. Powerful. So when, when you get into the educational sector, organize programs that encourage students. All right? 
organize programs that encourage students on billboards of schools instead of writing Socrates say write you can make it you can believe it draw the student in every faculty draw students receiving their convocation certificate before they step into their lecture theaters that's what they are seeing they will become what they are seeing hallelujah that's how to apply scripture music come music we've had people deceive us in church we sponsored them they went on air they produced album we bought it marketed it for them only for them to go on air and then sign up with something we don't understand they started reducing jesus to god god to divine divine to you you to her her to queen queen to princess princess to us are you aware of the challenge that you have to face in the music industry what's your result praise god um, one thing is this you, you don't do music because you see others excel in music you do music because it's a calling it's a gift and one thing we need to realize is that you can't give what you don't have for you to give life you need to have life for you to minister anointing you need to have anointing you need to be grinded in the word of god music is not what will come outside and just start shouting you can even you with a rough voice you can minister anointing to people your private time we should have quality time with god in our private in our privacy you need to give what you have not just come and make sure of your voice and your 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 vocal prowess to to minister life you need to have life and the word of god should be taken seriously god should be our inspiration hallelujah have you written any song name two christian gospel artists in nigeria that you know Some song frank edward god bless you appreciate him please please go back if you tell us you are called into ministry and we tell you name two gospel ministers and and you are chewing your mouth we will not castigate you but we'll tell you go and sit down right then you pass paper and say i want to minister in koinonia we say no go and sit down work on yourself first hallelujah stand out okay praise the lord came to realize that in our today's world there are many souls are dying there is someone that God wants to use to pull children to the kingdom of God. I want to take the example of Michael Jackson, the king of pop. If Michael Jackson should be a child of God, the crowd, he has moved proud to the world. But if that person is, a, is safe and he has pulled this crowd, all of them will make it to heaven. So when he died and I saw the crowd that are coming to him, for his very it was a challenge to me. I said, this one, if it is for God now, what will happen? Could I be a great soul winner? Praise the Lord. Now, when I was told that, Sarah, you are called to sing. And I said, God, can I sing? I don't know how to sing, but I admire people singing for your glory. And I don't know anything about music, but I submit. And anytime I stand and I handle the mic, I see the power of God moving. And I say, Lord, connect me to the people that will try me so that when I come out, when you announce me, that voice, that the people that are waiting for me, that unsafe soul that are waiting for me, will come and bow down before it through my administration in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Two music schools for you. Steve Strings has his music school. Ruben has his music school. Go and meet him. You will talk with him. He will train you. He's very gifted in that area. Go and meet him now. Hallelujah. fashion who is okay we'll soon round up there is there is the reason why i'm doing what i'm doing hallelujah fashion ah right now the world every day versace gucci 
um, boss, everybody is bringing up everything. Huh? All kinds of perfumes, all kinds of things. All right? And uh, we have everybody, all kinds. Right now, you see naked ladies on perfumes that are for men. I mean, completely naked. And, you know, all kinds of things. So how do we... By the way, let me tell you something. For music guys, do you realize that when Michael Jackson died, in three days, the album that he was supposed to use for his tour sold $120 million in three days after his death. People went to buy it. So music brings you to a position where you are an influence over people. That's the right time to communicate Christ. Hallelujah. So fashion... We have fashion parade, tarabangs, all of the people. How do you plan to compete with those world-class people? They are very good. They are very competent. They are not small at all. All they are Brazilian, we've won all, all of these things. How do you plan to come in with it? Hmm? They are Mary Kay. They are Gucci Rush. Hallelujah. As a good designer, you must have to go out, seek Okay, through that, you must have to be careful. There are some perfumes that you must have to be careful when you are putting it. You understand? You must have to be. Let him talk. What is your business? I asked you to come out. You didn't come out. You must have to be very careful because in every aspect of this life, you bring out fashions. There are some fashions that they are evil. You understand? So, spiritually, you must have to say no for that. that let, I'm just assuming. This, this is a shirt. Isn't it? I wear this shirt today. You don't know how it comes. It's coming about that. And you go out looking for it. No, without knowing that this shirt is from, maybe, from evil uh, 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 spirits. You begin to go and buy it. So you must have to be very careful. Spiritually, allow the spirit to lead you in every fashion that you are wearing or you are putting. Like so many girls, they are backsliding. You see their head putting. Appreciate him. Come on, appreciate him. Encourage him. Hallelujah. Paul said, anyone who is not against us is for us. Come on, appreciate him. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. What's that? Boutique. Beauty, makeup artist. Education? Oh, both. Come, makeup artist. Oh. Hallelujah. We'll give you one minute. I'm, I'm very serious about it. I'm, I'm a strange man of a person. Hallelujah. One minute, all right? How do you plan to make our sisters nice and beautiful, all right? Without causing the brothers to go to hell. <laughs> brothers, am I speaking? Yeah. Am I speaking? Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I will try by the grace of God to see that I make them up in such a way that to the glory of God, you make up to the glory of God and not to the glory of man. And just like I see it as a calling, I, I know it's not normal. It's not just a normal thing. Look good as in, you know, the right thing to wear, the right thing to put on. Even your lipstick should glorify God. Your eye pencil or whatever your powder should glorify God not the one you, you put on and look like a masquerade praise God hallelujah in other words they are asking ladies how many percent of you is the real you hallelujah as we all know essence of everything is bad um, you can always look beautiful. Um, doing your makeup 
lightly, not too um, too bold. And when you are um, making up, you it should go with what you're wearing. I, I like like now when you're applying pow powder or um, our foundation, whatever. Okay, as a, as, as a Christian makeup artist, I would advise that you make up lightly. Don't make it too shouty. You still look beautiful the way you Praying in tongues makes you beautiful. That's a big secret, I'm telling you. I know you will not agree. That's a big secret. I'm telling you. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in your mortal body, that same spirit will quicken, vitalize. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I told some of my friends that sometimes when I get jobs and then you look at the people you're about to make up, you can't help but start praying. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you don't know where to start from again i'd like to say that trend changes but style is doesn't change at all so the best thing to do like she said is moderation hallelujah now the problem we have in the fashion world is that we ladies we don't want to wear what this this lady is wearing all of us we want to look different you know so to an extent we try to overdo things but the secret is just this look 60 percent the trend and then 40 percent your own spice thank you Hallelujah. Look, let me tell you something. <laughs> Listen to me. Save yourself headache and don't die for nothing. Do the best you can and leave the rest of God. Don't kill yourself and say, I must look this. Must you do it? Who is complaining about how you're looking? See, there, there's pressure to be everything. I don't dress because this is the trend. Hallelujah. I dress when I like something, I wear it. You don't put me under pressure and say, this is how men of God, I don't know what they believe. I don't know what they are doing. Don't put yourself under pressure, especially ladies. Say, ah, this we've won is 5,000. You have 6,000, you are dying to use the 5,000 and fix it. Wash the one that you have and, and use it again. Who said you keep using it for the rest of your life? Is it only your roommates that will know? Hallelujah. We put ourselves under all kinds of pressure. Blackberry, you must use the Blackberry. You must use this. If your phone does not have camera, you are embarrassed. You beg your friend to help you. You are not an ambassador. You, have, you look older than your age. Because if you keep doing that for years, you, you will look, the stress will kill you. Appreciate all these people. Go back to your seat. God bless you. So together, are we making progress? Hallelujah. I didn't call these people because of a variety tonight. Hallelujah. I called to test at a particular point when Jesus was teaching. He said, 12 disciples come. And he sent them. He said, let me know whether or not we are making sense. And they came back. He sent the 70. And the Bible says they came back rejoicing. And they said, even the devils were subject to us in thy name hallelujah it's important for us to know that there is transformation and there is change happening in the life of everybody not everybody is going to be a pastor here true or false so our ministry is not just for pastors not everybody here is going to be a, an entrepreneur a business person not everybody maybe not everybody will marry i didn't say god said it i said not everybody you can choose hallelujah but that whatever it is the bible says we are god's workmanship created in christ jesus that's what it means to be an ambassador an ambassador is the representative of a government if we if we just work on ministers alone what happens to the politicians that's why nigeria is suffering we have men of god we have no voice in our senate 
and the one or two that are there the voice of the world will strangle them to a point that they have no voice we don't want it to happen that way there is a strategy that god is giving us i follow me now i've said it here that the true apostolic ministry does not just train people it invades people and shifts cultures systems so whether it's steve strings or um or jimmy on air jimmy when we see you on exclusive to divinity or um al Heri doing our fashion whatever you know all of these things that we can see that christ is being directly before now the church has thought that the only way to train people is to just get them to pray get them to study the bible hallelujah and then have their nice and small house but there are policies being formed every day and we are suffering the consequences if we do not have voices that rise in these systems a time will come the church will be strangled are you listening to me in a place like zaria it's very difficult to give a church a land hallelujah there are many difficult ways so don't say it does not matter otherwise a time will come when certain policies will be put together do you know right now in which of the countries i don't know they officially permitted gay all right and not just gay but the gay can choose any church that they want to wed so they can come for koinonia now and say you must wed us and if you do not the government will seize your license you know it's only in nigeria that you can start ministry when you like abroad you there are there are ways you do it in, in, in you don't just do it whether you're a miracle worker or not are you following me now so you can imagine that that kind of thing don't say it cannot come to nigeria this is spiritual and if believers do not rise in that area if god does not have a voice we are in trouble hallelujah and this is what kingdom invasion is all about this is the principle that great men like sondia delaja used and they caused the orange revolution in ukraine a city that is a racist nation but he brought a revolution in that city and forever his name will be in the sands of time as a revivalist the church must become a platform for training and building believers must be able to come to church and not just get educated but get equipped and trained believers are not idiots we are intelligent people we are just spiritual that's all it doesn't mean we don't have common sense the church has taught believers to kill away your common sense that the way you love god is have no sense of reasoning again so the moment you step out of church you have no relevance to the system whatsoever we need believers that can have a voice both in the system jesus spoke to pharisees the government of the land he had something when he went to farmers and business people he could communicate to them he went to prostitutes and the outcasts he could relate with them jesus could relate with every strata of society he met the military people he had something to tell them he understood the law to the point that when caesar came he said give to caesar what belongs to caesar he understood the legal side of ministry Paul had this understanding. A time came, it was not his anointing that saved him. He said, look, let me tell you, I am a Jew. I was trained under Gamaliel. A Pharisee to the core. I understand these principles. Don't take it for granted that I'm preaching the cross. Doesn't mean I'm an idiot. I'm an intelligent scribe and Pharisee. And it saved him. By the way, let me tell you, Paul was not a tent maker. Alright? Paul made prayer shawls, not tents. To add it to your bible knowledge paul was not a tent maker the translators made a mistake his job was prayer shorts not tents hallelujah do you believe that we are the revivalists that are going to shake this nation do you believe that we are the ones who will arise do you believe that above and beyond abu above and beyond zaria there is an international anointing upon your life this is what god told me to do tonight do you believe that all these teachings on faith we are teaching on faith we are teaching on character we are teaching on giving you know i've been so i'm sure the ministers have been impressed by the turnout of titus again and again and the way people are becoming obedient to the word of god 
Hallelujah. We are teaching these things. Grooming, equipping. This is what it means to equip, to supply the tools that it takes to rule and to reign. I assure you, you will not regret what you are doing. Many of you will thank God that you pass by Zaria in your destiny. Hallelujah. We are God's workmanship. Say, I am his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. I am absolutely confident. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know that seated among us here, if only God can open our eyes prophetically to see the caliber and the class of people who are seated here. Maybe you did not know that they will graduate such great generals. Today they celebrate generals all around. If they had known that all of these men today who are generals and world renowned figures, this is how I've said something. I said this thing right from the days we used to meet at the back of um, at the back of, of chapel. I said we are going to be great in life, and the beautiful part is we will all know ourselves. We'll be related to one another. Hallelujah. Creating a kingdom community is the key to sustaining kingdom values. We are not wasting our time. This is not just church as usual. Oh, you jot and write. Hallelujah, you get up. Uh -uh. That you leave koinonia with a resolve. In your heart. Without this understanding, your Christianity becomes boring. Because you don't know what else to do when you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. We do not know that Christianity is not just a religion of servitude, but it's a call to responsibility where we can represent Christ. So you see that every time you are building, while you are in class, others just want to pass and go. You are conscious of the fact that I am an ambassador. So they are just doing malpractice. They are not even listening to what the lecturer is saying because they want to go. But you know that I am different. Hallelujah when people are getting thorough you are serious you are buying books you are building you lock yourself you are fasting like that gentleman for five days why will someone be fasting our media department just a week or two finished i think five or seven days fast how can a media department be fasting for what to hold camera but this is how much they see where they are going listen your comprehension of where god is taking you determines how much you are willing if you know you are going far it will not be a burden for you to prepare right now are you listening to me the way many of us are preparing we plan to end in zaria or to end in kaduna state or to end in the north i told myself something i said before my parents go to be with the lord they will know they gave birth to a son indeed hallelujah can your parents say that about you or they just look at you and when you are getting married your father just look at you and say thank god thank god 29 years of misery thank god we are his workmanship i bring you a message very simple message tonight that the lord is counting on you the Lord is counting on ambassadors and generals. Don't just grow up and get old. Realize that you have an assignment. Shout it. Say, I have an assignment. I have a mandate. I am not a non-entity. I am going somewhere to happen. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you. I know this about my life. I knew this years ago and today by grace I have the privilege to teach and talk to God's people it's not a mistake hallelujah are you listening to me please Steve stand up he was my roommate we were roommates hallelujah and what happened those times he used to bring keyboard room 155 old block he will bring keyboard and I will be on the keyboard and he will be on the guitar. And then Andy, now Ambassage, who received a, a, one of the awards as, as, as the best gospel rapper. That was where we will worship. Then no koinonia, no apostle, no nothing. 
no money to buy any suits like this no nothing nobody calling you sir or no nothing but we believed and Steve would play the guitar I remember sometimes during our, our devotion in the morning other people from other rooms would come because we will worship I'll never forget the time we had a divine visitation we were worshiping and we held our hands three of us and we prayed in tongues and there was such a dense presence of God and that was how we lay down and slept there the power of God I remember those times I'll be sitting down and the power of God will come upon me so much and I'll just look for them and just be lay hands <laughs> those were days of practice we are still under practice but a higher level of practice who would have known he didn't have the name strings yet but today the grace of God has made him a voice around and everywhere you go to you save Steve strings people clap and some of you admire him and say oh dear just like many of you will stand five years from now and look at your congregations yes 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 you'll be married to the pastor and when you stand and see every kind of misbehavior you address it squarely and they ask you where did you learn this kind of thing from you say i remember there used to be one one big mouthed young guy like this in zaria that will not let us rest ah how come you are walking and you are prophesying like this yeah there was one yellow guy and I saw the way you prophesy. And every time you're making your congregation laugh and they say, where did you learn it from? Come on, tell me who you say was doing it. Yes. This is where God is taking us. Steve Strings, I just brought him up to tell you. And this is only the beginning. I will not be surprised today if I see Steve Strings playing and you are watching KICC and you just start and say, tell me I'm dreaming. This is Steve. Don't say you are dreaming. You think he's playing. Or one day suddenly, you have been praying that I won't go on air. I will go one day. <laughs> Let me assure you. I know many of you are praying and say, Kai, oh God, please, all these kind of people, don't go. I will go. God will take me there. And you will be part of the partners. Because God will speak to you and you are promised to be obedient. hallelujah i believe what i'm saying with the whole of my heart this is not the end of eni this is not the end of koinonia this is just a step out of the cave compared to where we are going for your life i may not know you by name listen to me you are lost in the crowd sitting here that was how i used to sit down years ago when men of god are preaching i'll be in fcs sitting quietly and men of god will come and preach some of you the grace of God is upon your life and lost in that crowd and today by grace this is how some of you by grace will be called out this is how some of you will stand some of you will be the dangotes and the otedolas and they'll be asking you to say how come Nigeria is booming in agriculture like this and you say there is one called the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit as a businessman you say yes yes you not just say god those of you who said god here yeah, i hope you know the god you are talking about i believe this with all my heart this is what we are striving after some of you are seated here you will have ministries you will be the next benny hints you know i'm not lying the spirit of god tells you that what this guy is saying is not a lie some of you women will move in strange anointings you will move in the anointings of catherine kuman the anointings of amphi mcpherson madame gunion maria woodward eater you will bring revival in this nation i know it we are going to pray just for five or ten minutes and then we are done this is my message tonight i kept thinking about this all through and i was wondering i said lord you really want me to do this and the lord said yes we're going to rededicate ourselves and say lord 
Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. I want to give in serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Here is my life. I want to give. I want to give in serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God. Here is my here is my life, here is my life, rise up on your feet, here is my life, here is my life, come on sing, here is my life, here is my life, here is my life. Go ahead and begin to pray and say, Lord, here is my life. Pray. Say, Lord, I'm the one Joshua Selman has been talking about. You will commit great ministries to the nation. You will commit anointings into my hands. You will commit grace. Pray. Say, Lord, you are talking about me tonight. Here is my life. Kingdom invasion invading the cosmos. I am God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Bible says you are a royal priesthood, you are an holy nation, a peculiar people called to show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light pray say lord i will change my sphere of influence wherever you are sending me to pray here is my life train me let the wisdom of bizalel come let the anointing of ezekiel come let the prosperity of solomon come let the leadership of joseph come pray let the grace of Esther come. Let the favor of Jesus come. Let the anointing of Paul come. Let the prophetic dimension of Agabus come. Pray. Let the evangelistic grace of Philip come. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Listen. Now we are going to pray. Every call of an ambassador, write it, is a call unto responsibility. And responsibility entails preparation. Preparation entails sacrifice. Every call of an ambassador, you are not at your best yet. No matter how great you are. I'm speaking to generals tonight. You are not at your best yet. You know how to weave. Why are you stopping there? You know how to make hair. Why are you stopping there? Every time. Let me teach you something. Every time. Go on your knees before God. And pray on your giftings. And pray on your skill. Say Lord let an anointing come upon it. If you are going to have the next McDonald's. Say Lord there will be an anointing. It will be a platform to heal the sick. That your eatery will be known as a miracle center. Hungry people will come and eat and live with more than just satisfaction. There's a song Alvin Slaughter sang. He said, what's that you have in your hands? I can use it. Only if you are willing to lose it. I learned it from Jang Fa. Years ago it was his song. He liked it. I tried to learn it from him. I, I just couldn't get it. He said, I'll take the little that you have. And make it brand new. Why? Because I am El Shaddai. Tonight can you submit your giftings. And say Lord it may not be much. But it can change nations. 
lift your hands and say lord i surrender my giftings and my skill it may not be much i may just know how to set sound but lord take it tonight use it for your glory anoint it i know i don't have a voice i'm a shy person but breathe upon this servant of yours and make a voice out of me i just know how to do beauty makeup and fashion breathe upon it oh god and give me a voice to the nations i will stand for you lord i don't know how to preach i only have a passion for the lost and the lord is saying i will anoint you what you have is enough come on pray lord this is what i have two loaves and five five fish lord can it feed five thousand people yes it can lift up your two loaves and five fish of talent lord i am not eloquent i cannot speak good english i didn't go to a good school but i desire to serve you yes you can take you and make a wonder he made a wonder out of his camera lord my village is not in the map of nigeria lord i don't know my purpose in life but i love you yes he can use you that's a good place to start lord i don't know why i'm here on earth but you can start from there i don't know where you are taking me oh god but i'm willing i'm available i'm available i will not disappoint you i am available hallelujah run away listen to me run away from any company of friends that are visionless people and will not help you where you are going i don't care how long you are with them even if they grew up in your yard this is the time to tell them look i am going somewhere abraham got to a point where he told the servants you cannot follow me from here it's not that i hate you but where i'm going requires that i carry my sacrifice alone many of you that's the decision that will make god start using you this one leg in here and then another leg there better take the other leg this night and get serious sit down buy books go to jordan bookstore jordan is there buy the books you may have only gary run away from that stupid faith message that teaches you that if you don't have anything now your faith is not working sit down with your gary and buy the books and and, and drink it honorably the great drank gary like that too there was a time we drank it and we drank it honorably we ate bread and put granite inside and drank it with ten eras over and we we're praying in tongues don't think we didn't do it oh yes we did it the time we took ginger i killed two birds with one stone because i used to sing there so i used the ginger to that's all i could get and then i'll exercise my voice ten naira bread and we put granite inside and eat it and say lord you are faithful now you are getting only beans and you are saying for the past four days i've eaten beans and they've taught you that's not a sign of faith use your money to buy books buy the truth sell it not. sit down don't buy suits you don't need to look like joshua selman it took me years to get here don't frustrate yourself some of the suit i'm having people sold it into my life nobody will sew it into your life yet so stop trying to say i'm trying to look mm -mm. go and sit down sit down with your one trouser wash it iron it carry your bible you can't afford a concordance but you can afford 100 naira cafe other people are browsing in the day beg your friend for his internet for his mother and sit down and browse you're signing a track record in the realm of the spirit say lady don't sit down and say oh come and marry me go and find out how to be a mother how to be a wife how to be a minister go and ask people that are married buy juice and go and greet our, our, our mommy prof is here our mommy nankwa's mother is here buy juice and go and greet them pastor william's wife is here buy juice one day and go and greet and say mommy what will you advise me as a young lady we're going around and say who will come and marry me oh, oh, my God, oh, my hallelujah and i say guy 
stop claiming the life of successful people and sit down and start asking them what they did to get to where they are, they are getting to all those I claim, I claim, I claim you see and you, yeah, I claim, you even draw it you will draw it and sit down and see it there I tell you it will not come to pass hallelujah you can buy Zobo I know that we have not attained yet but there is something we can tell you hallelujah make pepper soup and run and corner Jake's and say Jake's please God is sending me to the nations we went to massacre. We went for Panchin Crusade. We have gone for crusades. Jake single-handedly, as an undergraduate student, took over the Church of God in, in, in Shika, the Church of God in Giwa. We used to tease him and say, he has Giwa, Giwa Church or Giwa Assembly. He was the president of, uh, of Gospel Team. He has something to say. It's time for you to begin to respect the grace and the people around you. You can look at your roommate. Stop looking at your roommate as your roommate. Start looking at the anointing upon your roommate. You may be 10 years older than the person. Hallelujah. Very important. The person may even be your mother. One day come and kneel down before your mother, not as your mother, but as the servant of God. And say, bless me. Let your hand touch my head. Open up a door of destiny. We did it in Lagos. Abi. There was a time we met Mommy Oje. That family is an enviable family. All of us got down on our knees. We said, Mommy, we will not go, we will not come back to Lagos until something happens. And that woman lay. See, let me tell you, we are like bees. We are a product of many blessings. It's not everything we got on our secret place. Follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Some of you who are very rude to elderly people, you see, whether it's your mother or your brother, you see everybody just insults them because you now know how to use blackberry say honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long you don't honor them you will die young it's not a prophecy it's the word of god men of character and grace say after me i'm willing to sit down say it i'm willing to sit down and pay the price and God will honor me. One more time, say I'm willing to sit down and pay the price. Yes. Let's see more of you in Jordan Bookstore. Go and meet the media. Collect koinonia messages. God is sending you for ministry. You don't have the tape of anybody. Only the program that you preach. You just preach all kinds of disjointed scriptural things. That's the only tape you have. You are learning. Go and buy. Get these things. They are free. Sit with them because they invited you and say okay go and preach in this final year program you suddenly carry one lady and say come you help me with my itinerary sit down Jerry. when i see people do all those things i tell them sit down i don't care what you think you are prophesying i'm not the kind of person you come to me and say god said the moon and start i tell you sit down now come the cross are you blessed tonight lord we thank you give us grace to sit down i assure you brothers and sisters you will bless god for these days of your life you will bless god ask our mothers and our parents and they will tell you as young people we are setting a great foundation lord we give you praise be glorified we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity in the name of jesus christ i pray amen hallelujah the secret of spiritual growth is progressive revelation. There is nothing else that can make a man grow. The Bible says that when God made man in the Garden of Eden, the life that they had was supposed to be sustained by the continuous eating of the trees of the garden. They were not eating it for hunger. They were eating it because it had the capacity it was called the tree of life. It had the, the capacity to give life. And that tree is the accurate revelation of the word of God. So as we receive the word of God, there is an unveiling of the reality of this life, this Zoe life that we talk about. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm excited because many of you may not realize that every great revival started with a movement that was concealed. People did not know that this was how far God would go until the fire became so much that no devil could stop and he began to move from city to city. Hallelujah. There's an army rising up. There's an army. There's an army rising up. To break every chain. 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 Can you just sing that part? There's an army rising up. There's an army. Rising up. We are this mighty army. There's an army that is rising up. There's an army. We're rising up. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prophet began to speak. Malachi the prophet started speaking and he said, there will be a sign that will characterize the coming of Jesus. It says, shortly before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Hallelujah. Did you know that the Bible never tells us anything about Elijah's birth, origin? It just tells us this, this wicked system, this she goddess called Jezebel, who was married to the king Jezebel was a witch she was not a wife that's why she reappears in Revelation again in the book of Revelation Jezebel reemerges again hallelujah the personality Jezebel was an adumbration of a system hallelujah and the Bible says during her time the prophets of God suffered so much the prophets of Baal were reigning and they locked up and killed the prophets of God. Suddenly, a strange man without origin just imagine. The Bible says, and Elijah the Tishbite. From where he came, we don't know. We don't know who, where he was taught the things that he knew. The Bible says he was a representative of a spirit. Elijah represented the sword of God. And the Bible says when he showed up, he showed up for one assignment. To conquer that she goddess. And afterwards he left. Who is this strange man? Because we see him reimagine again. Jezebel is still in revelation. Elijah is still in revelation. Where did he come from? Did he just appear and Elijah the Tishbite? Where was he trained? Who taught him that the eye of witchcraft could not find? And Elijah the Tishbite rose up as a cry. The prophets of God were suffering. Only about 400 of them were being kept in disguise by a man called Obediah. No prophet could lift up his head and prophesy the counsel of God. And the Bible says in response to their cry, one great prophet, Elijah the Tishbite. A single man who terrorized the system of Jezebel and brought her to her knees. And the Bible says, before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come back again. But he will not come back as a person he will come back as an apostolic generation. Are you getting my point? And is in the similitude of what was adumbrated in the Old Testament. Nobody understood. Nobody knew about the training. He was, he was a strange manifestation. 
the bible says elijah the tishbite and this is the making of elijah's the spirit the authentic spirit of prophecy that will arise this is how his kingdom will come hallelujah and elijah the tishbite suddenly showed up and he began to cause havoc to this godless system i need you to know that you are a representative of this spirit of elijah this authentic apostolic and prophetic spirit and the first assignment of elijah is to destroy the altars are you getting my point the first assignment of elijah is not to call the names and phone numbers of people the first assignment of elijah is to come in with a dimension of god that has not been seen that will bring the powers that be to their knees this is why i raised this song to break every chain a reemergence of the elijah spirit hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Tonight I have I've just been praying for the teachings that we're going to be bringing that not only will we get puffed up with rema and knowledge hallelujah but that these teachings will sustain an ability to cause radical transformation in our lives. We have said this is a season of light and brothers and sisters let me tell you there is a level of light that you carry you become a threat to the kingdom of darkness this is what we are training we are training you to become a light a light you will be so bright the powers of darkness cannot ignore our job is to expose the works of darkness and to bring people to accurate spiritual understanding hallelujah thank you jesus first timothy 4 verse 1 let's rush he won't stop till we look just like him he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him God is birthing something strange in these days. God is revealing something new in our midst. He won't stop, He won't stop until we look just like Him. He won't stop, He won't stop. first timothy 4 verse 1 now the spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons stop the bible says in the latter time there are certain people who for some reason will depart from the faith and will begin to give heed to what deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons very interesting it didn't say doctrines that were taught by demons doctrines that were manufactured from the pit of hell and brought taught accurately by demons verse 2 speaking lies in hypocrisy and having their own conscience seared with hot iron verse 3 forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from food which god has created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth the last verse was for for every creature of god is good and nothing is to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving let's just stop there hallelujah we are examining three things tonight tonight we're going to be studying the scripture hallelujah 
everybody say i receive light when when our eyes are open we will be able to mature and comprehend the things of the spirit deeper let me tell you something listen do you know what scares demons and principalities and powers it's not the statue of a man or woman are you getting my point it's not your english it's not your degree hallelujah but the degree of light the degree of light when you see the spiritual structure of a believer you can know his level in the spirit by the degree of light are you following me now so at the mount of transfiguration jesus revealed to us how his spirit man was are you getting me it was light so bright that the people could not comprehend it and every time we come before his presence by revelation we keep contending to attain unto that dimension of light and the degree to which we conform to that light is the degree to which we rise to maturity and that's a product of revelation the difference between revelation and information is that revelation transforms information just gives you awareness if it is revelation it must change you it was designed to change you if you truly understand it hallelujah praise the lord the bible says in the latter days verse one again please that men will give room to deceiving spirits who are these spirits where did they come from what is their ministry please pay attention brothers and sisters we are in a day and age that if you lack spiritual intelligence you will die are you following me now we need it as a matter of urgency In every generation, there is always a contention of light and darkness. There are people who just go around as social beings. But there are certain people who understand spiritual things and are anointed to communicate the counsel of God to make sure that the banner of the kingdom is lifted throughout that generation. And we happen to be that generation. So it's important for everybody to pay attention. There's a lot of error going on in the body of Christ. Listen, please. Hallelujah. And the error that is going on in the body of Christ is so deep, it calls for immediate response. Hallelujah. If we do not respond to the tragedy that is happening in the body of Christ, and we allow this Jezebel to strangle away the prophets of God. If Elijah's do not arise, a time will come there will be no prophets who will speak the counsel of God. Are you following me now? There's a lot going on in the body of Christ, the continent of Africa, and especially our dear country, Nigeria. Nigeria is the firstborn of Africa. We are the model to the the continent of africa in terms of spirituality hallelujah and it's important that we preserve the things of the spirit there are three errors in the body of christ that we trust god to address and correct tonight hallelujah It's called apostasy. You know what apostasy is? Apostasy is a departure from the accurate truth of God's word. A departure. I preached a message, I think it was last year or year before last, the apostate church, you can get it and listen. A departure from, not, listen, listen, please. I, I don't mean the departure from a doctrine. I mean a departure from the known patterns of God everything about the building of God's kingdom is not left for the discretion of man are you following me now there is a pattern 
God in his nature will not allow man to build his kingdom his own way. It has always been the character of God to create a pattern for man to access him. So apostasy is when by the activity of wicked spirits, men begin to deviate from the accurate pattern of God. And the Bible says this will happen in the latter times that some will depart from the faith. What faith? Christianity? No. 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 God never called us Christians. What is the faith? The pattern. There is a pattern that our fathers followed. They knew something that made them walk with God. They knew something that made the, the kingdom of darkness quake before them. And there is a gradual deviation. Please listen to me. The church in Nigeria is deviating fast. And there's got to be an, an intervention of Elijah. Because the few prophets of God who are left in the country are facing a lot. Jezebel is, is prospering on our pulpits, in our churches, across different places. And the prophets of God, the true prophetic and apostolic voices are being quieted until Elijah rises. And that there be an open contention between light and darkness to return the body of Christ back to pattern. Otherwise, we are going to lose it and we'll miss it, not just as a continent, not just as a nation, but as a people. Hallelujah. Say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 13, verse 25. Matthew 13. Jesus began to explain to us the tragedy that will befall the church. Matthew 13. Let's start from verse 23. Or 24. Let's, let's make it 24. And another parable he put forth to them saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed that man listen that man is god and his purposes and counsel so how did it start it started with good seed is that true he sowed good seed he created a pattern but something happened 25 the first four words one two go but while men This is how the spirit of the Antichrist began to enter the church. He began to cause men to sleep. The Bible says that a time came when the eyes of Eli started getting dim. And remember the Bible says the eye is the light of the body. That means if your eye is closed, there is no more light. No more illumination. There is no more access to divine things. And the Bible says that the eye of Eli started getting very dim. And that continued until it got to a point where men slept. Hallelujah. While men slept, when they began to intercourse with Babylon, when they began to respond to the promptings of this Antichrist system, when they began to do ministry by doctrines and patterns and methods that are not consistent with the way of God. The Bible says they started giving heed to deceiving spirits. Are you following me please? And they started embracing the doctrines of demons. And men slept. And then the enemy came and did what? So tears. This is what is happening to the Nigerian church. There is a mixing of that which is authentic with that which is counterfeit and all of them are being mixed in our churches in our parishes in our assemblies and right now there is so much confusion it will take the accurate eye of the eagle that is brought forth by the spirit of elijah to divide between bones and marrow and show the church that no matter how this looks this is not of god hallelujah 
because the Bible tells us something verse 26 it says but when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop then the tears also did what appear that means when they sowed it it was there as a tendency but it had not yet manifested are you getting my point now a lot of people started ministry hearing the voice of God but they did not stay in the spirit for the Holy Ghost to keep walking walking on them and pruning out anything that does not become like Christ eventually as the ministry started expanding as the membership started expanding they noticed a strange thing happening in the assemblies that there were also tears that were growing verse 27 it says so the servants of the owner came and said sir did you not sow good seed in other words who gave these pastors this message where did this rema come from where did this doctrine these revelations that we have built ministries we have held conventions and meetings with teachings that have no bearing with the patterns of the kingdom the bible says they ask a question did you not sow good seed what happened on the way how then does it have tears 28 this is what made a lot of men of God think that what they are doing is right because in the wisdom of God and for the sake of we the elect of God he said no the, see he said the enemy has done this and the servant said to him do you want us to go and gather them that means should we start pruning he said no nah, in the midst of these tears there are genuine people they are not strong enough to stand the heat of separation so let them grow verse 28 29 now he says but he said no less while you gather up the tears you will also hurt the wheat are you getting my point now and so god allowed many churches and many ministries to grow in spite of their wrong doctrines money was still coming are you getting my point membership was still coming and because of that a lot of people thought it was an endorsement that they were doing the right things but right now the spirit of elijah is suddenly showing up because the 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 wheat has become matured enough for the separation to begin to take place and the bible says 30 now let both grow together so no problem let the church grow even with the error no problem i will have a way by my wisdom to manage it but a day will come the separation will happen are you getting my point now there are so many people that have stood upon our pulpits and said a lot of things that have god has no hand in it at all there are many conventions in this country that god has no business with what is going on are you getting me they have organized god out of church programs they have gone for ministers conferences and imbibed doctrines of demons by men and women who have no altar at all hallelujah and the bible says let them both grow so they came back applied these things and it seemed to be producing results but right now it has gotten to a point where it's destroying the remnant of the house of god and except the spirit of elijah arises and addresses it the casualty will be too much it says until the harvest and at the time of the harvest i will say unto the reapers this is a strategy first gather together what this is why we are beginning to attack these things because the season of the harvest is here the bible says you guys are farmers speaking to the nation of israel he said there is a way you can look at the atmosphere and you will know that the harvest is near and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn so it started with good seed the man of god started as a genuinely anointed person the ministry started as an authentic ministry but eventually while men began to sleep the bible says a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the eyes and it says poverty is not just lack deprivation of all sorts whether spiritual material and otherwise will come upon you suddenly like an arm bandit so these men began to sleep hallelujah 
and it was in that sleep you see this is listen how many of you have read the story of samson and delilah samson was a type of the church delilah was a wicked spirit are you getting my point now notice that samson was called to be a judge over israel and the bible says savior shall arise everything in the bible is prophetic it's an adumbration of something an adumbration means a foreshadow are you getting me a prophetic preplay of something that would happen samson was a man who was strong and he terrorized the philistines and then the bible notice every time men who symbolize the government of god appeared it was women that threw them down not women they were physical entities but this woman you know why woman because women have the capacity to give birth and reproduce their kind again this is why the bible calls this babylon this harlot in revelation 17 it says she's a woman that sits upon a beast that has seven horns seven heads and ten horns are you learning something tonight a terrible tragedy happening in the body of christ and listen when delilah came to samson she studied his weakness are you getting my point she carefully studied it she did not come with a sword i want to show you the mystery of men sleeping and the bible said she came and she donated her love free of charge for him correct the first time you see the nature of the glory of god is that the glory of god does not depart suddenly when the glory of God in the vision that was shown Ezekiel, when it was leaving the temple, it left slowly. But adventure, the people would realize and repent. Hallelujah. The first time it happened, notice what is a woman looking for, trying to know the source of a man's strength. She didn't say, marry me. She didn't say, sleep with me. She didn't say, give me money. Are you following me now? she kept saying samson tell me the mystery behind your strength all she was concerned about was his anointing because it was with that anointing he will conquer the spirit of the antichrist are you getting me she wanted to kill the source of his strength and she found out that there was a relationship between his eyes his hair and his strength that was why when she captured him the first thing that happened was his hair the second thing that happened was his eyes I need you to know that all these women you see in the bible they were not normal they were envoys of demonic entities because they did certain things that did not make sense for instance why will herodias ask her daughter for dancing well she said make sure you tell the king that i want the head of john the baptist what do you do with head are you getting my point now there are many things that happen in bible that if you don't read with the spirit of revelation this is the error that many people have carried they have just read it theologically and they have bought for doctrines that are not accurate but the spirit of elijah comes dividing the word of god accurately hallelujah all through scripture we'll do a quick drive if it's possible as we as we continue and let me show you that disguising through people and stories has been the same battle the battle of light and darkness are you getting my point now for instance the bible tells us that before the coming of the lord again there will be a repetition of the days of noah did you read that in your bible what happened in the days of noah because you see when satan fell when satan fell there are so many things in my head now Let, let's just continue wherever we stop do you know what satan told the angels that made them to comply don't you think satan would have told them something that was really captivating for them to leave their estate and to come down to partner with him are you getting my point now because of satan's access to the presence of god he had knowledge of mysteries 
and the bible tells us that this man called satan or then the son of the morning rebelled he had a he had a political ambition all this ambition didn't start from the politicians there is a spirit and he he made this manifesto clear in isaiah 8 uh, in, in 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 um uh what now isaiah 14 now i will do this i want to arise above the stars of god i want to be like the most high that was his manifesto but he deceived all of these people and when he was casted down he was casted together with a lot of other angels hallelujah and then when adam came i told you again that the garden of eden is not in the earth realm are you getting me that's why they cannot find it the garden of eden is still intact you go to the book of revelation you see the garden of eden still there with the tree of life nobody has taken anything that garden was withdrawn are you getting me it was a supernatural sphere the reason is look at the things that covered the garden a cherub and a flaming sword can a cherub and a flaming sword just cover something that is just three-dimensional hallelujah and man was driven out of that garden but there was a prophecy and this it was that prophecy that started this great battle are you getting me the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and satan knows that every time jesus speaks he already has a strategy are you getting me please follow this when one of the errors that i want to correct i hope we'll be able to establish it is how many of you have heard of that thing called familiar spirits have you heard that statement i will show you the origin of the activity of what we call familiar spirits familiar spirits are not just out to monitor your life they are out to monitor the strategy of the spirit for every season Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Where do we start from? Okay. Are you getting my story now? And then, when Adam and Eve, when Adam knew his wife, and she gave birth to Cain, listen please, Satan thought that Cain was going to be the person that God will use. Because they, he knew that God would need a man. Are you getting me? So Satan entered Cain. Are you getting my point now see i'm talking of the activity please let's go to first timothy 4 verse 1 again the, i want to show you the ministry of these deceiving spirits can you see where it started from lucifer deceived the angels are you getting my point now and they came down when man fell deceived eve satan always changes the patterns of god because every time God, when God designed family, please listen. And, and, and ladies, you have to listen. This is a very powerful message. When God designed family, I hope you know that God made man the head of that family. Is that true? That means any correspondence through God, according to his structure, should go to the man. Notice how Satan changed it. Satan went to the woman. Are you getting me? And everywhere you see the manifestation of his spirit, the woman there, that figure tries to usurp it on the man. Jezebel. Are you seeing now? Herodias. And all of these kinds of people. This is what the Bible calls the devices of the enemy. Stratomai, the Greek word. His methodology. It may have changed and metamorphosed through seasons. But the pattern is the same. That means when you sustain the eye of prophecy, you can detect him at once. Are you learning something, please? So Cain is born and Satan makes a bargain with Cain. And Cain begins to manifest another spirit. And then the Bible says how that Abel shows up. And Satan, suspecting that God may use Abel, began to move Cain to kill Abel. Are you seeing why Cain? Why will Cain kill his brother? See, it's time for you to begin to study the word, not just to get sermons, but for spiritual knowledge. Ask questions. Why will Cain 
just killed the, his brother what for are you getting my point now when Cain killed his brother in a passage of time the Bible says Cain started building a city the Bible never told us that Cain was an architect what made him to start lusting after building a city it was the spirit of the Antichrist are you seeing because God wanted to build a city and name it after his son so the spirit of the Antichrist through Cain built a city and named it after Enoch his son and that was where atrocity started from are you getting my point now and then it got to the time of Noah God suffered long with them when it got to the time of Noah listen to me listen to me Noah was a very strange man he was not just an old bald headed man Noah walked with God are you getting me Noah had a manuscript that he used to build the ark the ark was not just built carelessly of gopher wood and so on and so forth it was a prophetic message are you getting my point now Noah had secrets that he knew that made him the head of the spiritual activity of that generation he talked with God he communicated with God he understood the mystery of the flood and that was the reason why listen please listen listen when they came out Shem, Ham and Japheth there were eight people again Satan started looking for somebody else to enter are you getting my point so Satan entered Ham are you getting my point and the Bible says he saw his father's nakedness he did not just see his father's nakedness it's a coded word he saw into the secret of what Noah was supposed to preserve why will a man curse his son for just seeing his nakedness and say you will be a servant of servants is that cost not too much just for seeing a man's nakedness what of children that take care of their parents in the hospital and have to bath them and do other things it was beyond just seeing a physical nakedness it was opening something spiritual that he was not prepared for he was it was every time men shifted from god's patterns they suffered this was why he caused Cain. i mean harm and the cause that was given to harm if you read your bible very well was that he was going to serve his brothers is that true now satan found expression through harm go to genesis 11 don't you, i mean you don't need to open it but go to genesis 11 what happened suddenly another wizard who was the son of Cush, who was from the lineage of ham are you seeing now a man called nimrod nimrod strange man just appeared from nowhere a man who commanded such power he was a lord are you getting my point now how did nimrod gain so much influence and the bible says nimrod was a hunter we never saw one animal that nimrod hunted what was he hunting i will show you in the book of revelation that he was hunting for souls because satan suddenly realized that destroying men is not the way so he says let's adopt them and use them rather than killing them are you are you getting my mystery tonight Bible says it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom there are things you understand that the devil will run away from you because he knows that light has brought everything that is darkness to bear are you getting my point now the problem with we preachers is that we just cut a lot of stories and tell people things that when they join the puzzles together it doesn't make sense listen listen I think I was talking to um the, the the music director and and the worship team chairman they came over to my place and i told them that i've been criticized for a lot of things one of it is this faith thing i believe in faith but i've said this thing again and again years ago that faith doesn't have to be on something you don't understand are you getting my point the true concept of faith it's not just built on shadows that cannot be understood i said it last week no pilot sits on a plane and says passengers i trust god that will arrive safely i've never learned how to fly this plane but you guys just sit back sit back and 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 and, and, and enjoy there's jehovah jireh there's jehovah sikenu there's our banner 
and all of that and then the people sit down and say hallelujah let's just be confessing we will arrive we will arrive plain corporate we are now at three thousand feet nobody does that are you getting my point now so faith is not a mystery it has been turned to look like anything in the kingdom you just understand just you don't understand just accept by faith have you had teachings like that god said it i may not understand it i don't care i want i don't want to understand it all i know is that satan is the bad guy jesus is the bad guy we are for jesus let's win him this is what americans are are shipping into nigeria and we are laughing and receiving it and holding massive conventions and misleading people whereas the bible says do not be unaware of the stratomai satan is not an idiot he has a, a strategy this guy stayed close to the presence of god are you learning something tonight so you see it nimrod kush he said go to let us build a city build a city again the same city that Cain tried to build and then the judgment of Noah cancelled everything now he says let us build a city and let us make a name for ourselves listen when you study Bible history please listen I want to show you the origin of occultism and witchcraft are you following me now don't say it does not concern you the word is making you mature believers are you getting my point now do you know the origin of this thing we call occultism and witchcraft Nimrod Kush according to Bible history was the son of Kush who married a woman called Samiramai are you getting me and because listen please this is very very important Samiramai was a witch these were people that were possessed they were incarnates of hell are you getting my point envoys that wanted to continue the agenda of god samira my killed kush her husband are you getting me and satan came and interplayed this thing satan came and made nimrod to believe that in this new move and in this kingdom he was going to make him lord he was going to be great and the price for that is that he will aberrate the normal progression of of human beings and then Nimrod married his mother are you getting my point now so Nimrod married are you seeing how Satan was twatting the the do I call it the genetic code of human beings Nimrod married his mother can you imagine now the son I don't know what what they are going to call the son now huh his mother is still his grandmother as ugly as it is listen this was the mystery of what began to happen to Nimrod Nimrod was a hunter of souls his job was to exert so much influence that he would bring people to himself because in Revelation when he began to tell us about this mystery Babylon and all the commodities she does business with it called the souls of men is that true is that true there's no time you see this time thing I wish like I feel like busy seeing this watch praise God <laughs> you just sing praise and worship and it's 10 o'clock praise God Kai this time is limited bear with us honestly these are not the kinds of things that you don't just come and share a message and it's boiling in my spirit because i want us to get it praise the lord are you understanding my story all through scripture when you trace you will see that this spirit looks for women in every generation that will represent its operation and look for men that will compromise are you getting me that was where witchcraft and so on and so forth started and then all these things called divination and necromancers all of these things happened when Saul was king there's no time but I hope you read your Bible very well you remember that remember when Saul was king Saul dealt with diviners and necromancers is that true he frustrated them so much according to scripture there was only one woman that was left one sorcerer 
one necromancer and the bible says a time came when saul slept and he deviated all right it didn't use that exact word but i'm just using it when saul deviated from the things of god he went to go and consult her is it in your bible and when she met him he he, he concealed himself and she said ah don't disturb me saul is saul has made life bad for us no business in this city again and he said no problem i vow i will not tell saul and he said whose spirit should i invoke I'm going to show you how men of God operate what you call the prophetic that they invoke the spirit of the dead correct it's happening in many churches somebody dies and they invoke the spirit of that dead person I want to show you how they use necromancy and when they do that they invoke that and the Bible says she invoked in her vision she was seeing an old man coming and Saul and Saul told her I said who do you do you see him tell me about his appearance and Saul from and Samuel now seemingly from the vision told that the man that is standing with you is Saul and she turned she said ah, ah are you not Saul he said ah sorry it's true I'm Saul but call me the spirit of Samuel you think that was Samuel he looked like Samuel talks like Samuel where did these spirits come from I want to show you see it didn't start with Africa so don't let westernization tell you these things are unnecessary they have been there in scripture and if we don't gain knowledge of this truth we will die like men men hallelujah help us Lord diviners and different people let me tell you something that happened see most of these entities that you call how many of you have heard of demons being disembodied spirits have you heard that word disembodied spirits what does that mean that means that there are spirits that do not have a body to find expression is that true that means they are consistently under frustration jesus himself taught us that when that spirit leaves a man it becomes restless because they need material medium to communicate there is a law in the earth realm that if you do not have a body you cannot function here are you getting my point let me tell you how this demon started i hope we have time can i talk to you see the bible says listen demons are not the uh, they are not the only wicked entities in the satanic kingdom demons are just a class of wicked spirits there are others for instance principalities they are not demons are you getting me i have come to the end of myself take over jehovah i have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself listen i hope you believe what i'm telling you listen how many of you have seen certain people maybe those who do a lot of occultic things when they leave their body they make sure they close the room so that nobody comes to push their body you know why because they must return the same way they left if you shift their body they are not dead but the spirits cannot return to the body again are you understanding what i'm saying There are many spiritual entities like that in the spirit realm. Please listen to me. I want to tell you some things that will bless you. We said this is a year of light. This is solid meat. Light that keeps you in command. Dominion will happen naturally. You don't claim it. Light brings you into it. Are you getting my point? We are, we are demystifying this deity called Satan. Once and for all. So that you will know that the church will truly be a victorious church. Listen. Satan led these demon spirits. Are you getting, I mean angels now. Are you getting my point? Now this was what, because it is within the character 
of angels to translate themselves is that true that means they can change state there are different kinds of angels maybe when we deal with angels we talk there is a northern army there are different there are messenger angels there are cherubs there are seraphs there are different kinds of angels now satan led a campaign and told these guys together with I've, I've, i said it the last time apollyon leviathan have you heard of all these spirits they were real spirits together satan didn't just do alone it was supposed to be that he would spearhead the rebellion and if it worked it would be chop by chop so all the demons that helped him are you getting my point now <laughs> when you read the book of psalms and see the things that the psalmist began to speak you will see that the spirit of revelation was upon him hallelujah are you getting blessed can we continue all right please make sure you are listening this is not let me tell you something with revelation if you get too used to it the devil can use it and kill you are you getting my point he won't kill you just by oppressing you he will make you so puffed up revelation that should deliver you is not delivering you but anybody who wants to talk to you you will begin to break these scriptures and say let me give you a rundown of how everything started and then it's not help. this is what is happening so we must open up ourselves and please listen i'm serious and contend for change this is not to equip you to now run to your fellowship or your church and say for the next four months i have a message and this is what people do and then start running and say ah i must do this i must do this there are angels there's apollyon have you heard of him and they say wow from whence cometh this kind we have not seen it in this fashion the goal of revelation is not entertainment brothers and sisters is to equip you with light that dispels every darkness hallelujah now listen these angels translated themselves are you getting my point in the days of noah and they started having intercourse with women physical women that means you know that the child they will give birth to will not be pure human that's the origin of giants are you seeing that that's why the children that they had six fingers six to superhuman abilities can i surprise you that breed is still in the earth today This is what scientists saw that they call X-Men. What is X? Former. What was the revelation behind their producing these films? You were just watching and eating popcorn in cinema and nodding. Whereas, this is a mystery. They know a war is coming. All of these scientific films keep telling you a war is coming. And that battle is between mankind and another race. This was the whole subject of Lord of the Rings. And they had to consult other kingdoms. And bring their kings together and it was a human one little boy called Frodo that carried the ring a symbol of authority all the other kingdoms backed him up these things are spiritual messages these scientists through through zodiac and and astrology and all kinds of divination they can peep into spiritual things it's not that they know the future are you getting me how do I put it now help me look at me how many of you know which country is ahead of nigeria time wise what what is uk how can you say uk us let's let's just assume please listen we, we don't have time let's assume australia how many of you know that when australia is saying 18th we are still in 17th so that ability to peep ahead that's what happens in the realm of the spirit because of the regulation of times and seasons are you getting my point it, this is what is adumbrated in geography that it is possible for one region to begin to access certain things before the other one it happens in the spirit too and this is the principle of divination Help us, oh God. Take me to the place, the place you are, that secret place. Take us, Lord. 
That's where I want to be Take me to the place The place you are The secret place That's where I want to be That's where I want to be Let's rush Error number one I touched it in the realities of heaven and hell but I just feel like touching it again because the message didn't strike the chord the way I want. So I want to touch on the issue again. Messages from hell, divine realms. That's number one error that needs to be. Listen to me. I don't know how many women have shaved their hair, sold their cover shoes, and did a lot of things because, listen, this is a very serious message right now. Certain people claim they went to heaven or went to hell listen i explain all these planes to you and you'll see sense in what i'm saying now and they brought the core message in the body of christ now is not the bible again is who came with what from where are you getting my point these are the deceiving spirits and the doctrines of demons remember the bible says if god did not cut the time even with the elect can be deceived what kind of great deception can make people to see a lie and take it as true. Are you getting my point? It must be a great deception. So, what is it? The Bible says, or the people, the story. Somebody just comes back. Oh, I went to hell. And then you print CDs, you print books. Now, there are a few people who will trust their experiences. Very few. As a matter of fact, they were the initial people. People like like um what's her name mary baxter and so on and so forth all these many things that they do now those people when they came back they even gave the cities free because of how much they wanted to be dissociated with this world huh but right now what we have is nonsense and there are many church pastors in an attempt to show piety and response to spiritual things this is the result of sleep they invite all these people, these, these people, and they come back. Uh, they come to pulpit and cry. Ah, I went to hell. I saw your mother. I thought your mother died. She gave me a message. It's her name, not Jane. You say, yes, my mother's name is Jane. I saw Jane. I saw Jane. She was crying in hell, and she could talk. Crying. Have you, have you seen a house catching fire? Have you seen the people inside? listen please this is not criticism please i'm just addressing something this is the spirit of elijah are you getting what i'm saying a lot of people came with revelations those of you inside outside if you are hearing me shout praise the lord listen these revelations are destroying churches right now destroying families are you getting my point people came ah you went to hell why did you go to hell your skirts didn't reach here why did you go to hell okay um this pastor you were supposed to drop five naira what where is the five naira that's where you are going somebody went to hell seemingly and brought back the list of the names of almost every man of god alive right now that they are sure candidates of hell this is somebody that got born again he was not up to three weeks and he seemingly went to hell i will show you the mystery of what is happening i wish we have time tonight i would have shown you something powerful It's the strategy of the devil the people are innocent are you getting my point don't be angry at the people they do not even know that they themselves are under deception Paul says, I was caught up to the third heaven. That means there are other heavens. There is the astral realm. There are a lot of other realms. There are galaxies. All of these galaxies and planets, I hope you know some of them have inhabitants. This is the mystery of aliens. This is the mystery of aliens. There is a lot of story we don't know in the earth. They just gave birth to you in the middle of history. It's what they taught you from social studies to what again? Social science. History. Government. And then you read 
political science or whatever it is and you believe you know the world no there is a lot more there is a lot more hallelujah there is a lot more there is a lot in this earth realm that we have there are portals in this realm there are many people you see in the earth realm that are not pure human beings they are moving like you they talk you've eaten with some of them in the restaurant they are not pure breeds these are agents of darkness preparing for the revival that is coming i read an article as far back as 19 i have the documentary as a matter of fact about people who went underground is that true they went underground and they saw a place designed by aliens that can see 20,000 people and there is an altar in the middle when you stand in that altar and talk they will hear you everywhere no mic verified scientifically don't you know there is a world under the earth Philippians chapter 2 that every knee is not just talking about hell alone What have they not told us brothers and sisters that is responsible i will show you how this applies so that you will see how your family got into it your innocent father from the village was just moving around nothing missing nothing broken he entered into what he didn't understand look at what a lot of believers are suffering it today and one of the error one of the error that I wanted to talk about is the negligence of spiritual laws. Many of us have, listen, listen, and I don't say this to criticize. There is an exaggeration of what we call the grace message. I've said this thing again and again. Please don't be offended. I'm just telling you the truth in love. There is a jurisdiction to which when the grace message steps out, it will be misleading there are people right now that they almost don't read the old testament you open they say what are you doing with the law i have a question what is law what really is law what is the cause of the law that christ redeemed us from is it ten commandments is it other mosaic laws or ten commandments plus them is it spiritual laws a lot of people speak and say ah oh, all of this law is gone there's nothing law nothing again but you believe in the law of sowing and reaping and you teach give and it will be given and a lot of people say even god cannot do anything so which part of the law has been abolished we'll talk about that in another teaching we have a lot of series this is a year of light we trust god to open our eyes not to go and start criticizing people but to be the light a reference the devil is in trouble this year there are things i will explain to you you will never be afraid of death again there are things i will explain to you you will know that even this mystery thing called deliverance you will understand who are these people that follow people quietly to church and come and sit down and later you say in the name of jesus and all of these kinds of things we will explain it when you understand this i'm telling you you will just start laughing you won't even pray let me tell you there are two ways to bind the devil one is prayer the other is revelation when authentic light enters you you grow out of some things at once deliverance is going on right now it's just that many people their concept of deliverance is ah you fall down say, i want to cough i want to no no it's not it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do those things light is what drives away darkness permanently you see that's why if if i deliver dosing for instance i lay hands on her and she rolls 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 and stands up listen and there is no light do you know why certain deliverances are so easy it's not because the man is powerful the demons are mocking the man he has no spiritual intelligence they just stroll out and allow him to go and he feels wow at once as soon as the person goes out they use anger or something and enter back together with the seven that they have gathered this is why you find out that there are many churches and men of god struggling with deliverance again because the whole service from morning till night is deliverance there is a balance he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them 
But my only trouble is what people call word is not what God is calling word because their word is not healing. Their word is not delivering. That means it's not the word. Look at me. Ella is a fair lady. If I tell you Ella is coming to see you, expect a fair lady tying something in her head with, with a ribbon. Or what is that thing? You see that? Are you getting me? If I suddenly decide to come, am I Ella? If I tell you my name is Ella, this is how many people's revelation. I'm sending the word. It will do this right now. It's not doing it. And the Bible says if it is the word, some things should happen. So if it's not happening, it's not the word. It may be scripture. The word, listen. The word is not just this. Are you getting me? Because until the apostles came, there was no manuscript. But the people understood the word. So what did they call their word? What did they call their word of God? He said, ye are clean through the words that I've spoken to you. That word can clean you. That's what he's doing now. So divine revelations. Let's just look at one scripture. Luke 16. Let's settle this issue once and for all. Please. Can we look at just one scripture? We may not be able to touch the... Honestly, there are three issues I thought we'd be able to talk about. Okay. We are there. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple, royalty, and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day 20 and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus listen every time Jesus mentioned name it was not a parable necessarily it was a real experience you understand in Jesus' parables he described men by what they did not their names which was laid at his gate are you seeing the contrast now it says full of what source verse 21 and desiring to be fed with the crumbs so on and so forth 24 okay no 23 i saw something i'm looking for there ah we've gone far can we go to 22 let's start from there and it came to pass that who died that's lazarus right lazarus died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. That's another issue there. Hallelujah. And the rich man also died and was buried. So two of them died. They've now left the earth. Let's see the drama that happened. 23. And in hell. So a definite place. Hell. Is that true? He lifted up his eyes. Being in torment. And seeth Abraham afar off. All right, that's Abraham's bosom, and I'll tell you why. And Lazarus, hey, I had a revelation, brothers and sisters, that opened me up. Do you know that unlike the teachings we have been teaching, that Abraham could not give birth because he was impotent, is not true. Abraham slept with Hagar. Did she get pregnant? What is the impotency about him? This was simple logic. I said, come on, ah, is this not the Abraham we are saying it is the deadness of his body and this, this guy slept with, with uh, Hagar and Hagar was strategically positioned by Satan in that place. See, when I show you these things and as we explore, you will see, ah, may God help and redefine our Christianity, you will see that Jacob was not a thief. Jacob was replacing what happened between Isaac and ishmael you see that that thing that looked like <laughs> that's why it's not called god of abraham isaac and esau it's called god of Ab didn't with god blind didn't he see esau it's called god of abraham isaac and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torment and seeth abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So, it was in Abraham's bosom. Alright, 23. And he cried and said, this is the man now in hell. Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the, fin 
dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame um, that flame is not just fire like you know because I hope you know their physical bodies are in the earth here so what kind of fire will torture their spirit body it's not just the kind of your fire here spirits can walk through this fire are you getting me this is a strange kind of fire it's a fire that causes thirst when it destroys you it not only are you going through pain but it makes sure that there is thirst it can absorb everything and cause you with the feeling of thirst and it's very frustrating look at this guy he didn't say let him send um, something to quench the fire he was asking for a drop of water and Abraham said son remember in your lifetime you received good things this guy received evil but now he's comforted and thou art tormented 26 now divine revelation please listen and beside this there is a gulf between us so that they cannot pass here and there and there we'll talk about this another time Hades Abraham's bosom and so on and so forth 27 then he said listen I pray thee therefore father that thou would they send him back to the earth are you seeing now send him back to the earth to my father's house so let's see see let's walk with what the bible says is that true do you believe the word of god you believe is the final authority and you believe it's a more sure word of prophecy so let's examine the word of god 28 for i have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into the place of torment so what was his request please come back to the earth with divine revelation abi go to my family and tell them ah i just came back from hell if they hear you their heart will melt and they'll change i don't want them to come here 29 what happened abraham said they have moses and the prophets let them hear them in other words it is not god's original strategy to bring people back from the world of the dead to come and bring revelation to the inhabitants of the earth abraham was saying listen this is not a normal root of god's dealings with people to make them grow are you getting what i'm saying abraham said they have moses the law and the prophets they are they are preachers already they should listen to them verse 30 and he said nay father abraham but if one went on to them from the, from the dead, he said what? They will repent. Is that true? 31. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Listen. So these teachings of people going and coming, say they went to the dead and they came back with messages and they saw this and that and that the bible tells us the living and the dead have no relationship is it in your bible is it in your bible that there is something that separates the living and the dead it is appointed unto man to die once and after that the judgment i believe in the resurrection are you getting what i'm saying but by divination people's spirits have been invoked and a lot of things have happened can i tell you many of these places these people went to were certain realms in the spirit they had never been there please get what i'm saying some of these beings they encountered were not jesus christ they encountered spirits if you see a spirit in the realm of the spirit you will still need spiritual intelligence to relate with them because satan can appear as an angel of light jesus said it when he sent the 70 when they return he said i've seen satan's next strategy the next strategy is not to be a demon again he has translated himself as an angel of light and he's now going to go to pulpits as angel of light he was revealing to them a strategy he wasn't just telling them that satan has just fallen like that mm -mm. hallelujah satan saw that jesus could give his authority to men and they could legislate on his behalf it gave satan an idea of the next strategy he said why not i translate myself and come as an angel of light wear suit and start gathering these people rather than killing them let me use them so jesus began to tell the disciples i'm praying for you immediately i've seen something that will happen satan has now changed his state to 
become an angel of light and he's moving around as elders in churches moving around as overseers moving around as different things and recruiting men who are entering deception and delusion without knowing but we are this army that god is granting us light alongside many other remnants across the surface of the earth and we are the ones who will break the hold of darkness in the name of jesus christ hallelujah let me show you one more scripture these are the scriptures that talk about out of body experiences paul now the apostle himself second corinthians chapter 12 please let's rush one error we have to kick out of the body of christ the messages the people bring notice listen the bible says you shall know a tree by what is fruit that's whatever proceeds from that tree is that not true that means like who who said it i, I think it was mike that said everything god creates he leaves an imprint of himself if god gives you a word and is from him there will be something about his karagma on that word how many people tell me the truth have been comforted by the recent divine revelation teachings how many that you know there are so many people who have gotten into religiosity people locked up their businesses people packed out of school other people went somewhere people just killed a lot of things fashion designers stopped their businesses they are broke now they are suffering because they told them that anything anything at all oh if you see Yvonne, it came from the the marine power if you understand satan you know that he does not have the power of creation he has an ability to mimic and corrupt that which is created are you getting my point now I, I, you can everybody has his personal belief and all of that i'm not but i'm just saying the reasons people are giving there is only one reason why people are in hell rejecting the gift of salvation that jesus brings are you getting my point oh a man of god did this this water was for bishop and he quickly drank it and when he was going out car hit him and he found himself that means all of us are going to hell you see that is killing what the bible calls the assurance of salvation so many people even preachers they don't know again whether they are saved or not hallelujah many people don't know whether they are saved or not and now the only way because that's the next thing i wanted to talk about is the false presentation of the gospel of holiness because there is the authentic gospel of holiness i tell you this one may is probably one of the biggest disasters that has happened to the church what has been taught to be the gospel of holiness is not what jesus taught are you getting my point now because a lot of people believe they are going to go to heaven based on the things that they have kept and avoided or done this and that no sir hallelujah you have no right to take a revelation and begin to yoke it on people based on your perception of truth you see let me tell you something the army that god is raising is an army that must remain as students we must create a posture that shows that we are students such that you are not ashamed to confront the revelations you have held as authentic when you see a higher light we must have that humility there's nothing embarrassing to accept that look i may not have seen it in this light i was blind but now i see the bible talks about a man called apollos he was a learned man in acts 18 the last few verses and the bible says but you knew only the baptism of john is that true and then aquila and priscilla came they called him and they expounded to him more perfectly and he was humble enough to receive and then he now went to the temple and began to debate and argue intelligently There are lots of people in the body of christ who are under bondage terrible bondage 
that innocently came but is a product of the spirit of deception for instance there are many people who believe that if i let me use a lady come if i give this lady a hug more ah this this may be a problem i've done something i've compromised it can cost me my salvation and so because i have to shift to that religious mode listen please i'm not criticizing any any church are you following me now this is an apostolic teaching it's a teaching to the body of christ salvation is personal your dealings with god is personal and it's time for us to kick the walls that are stopping us from entering the authentic experience of the kingdom because of this right now the guy can sit down he does not yet have the ability to conquer lust but religious mold has made him to know or to feel that okay you must confirm and then people are looking at him and he looks like a sanctimonious brother whereas he's dying with masturbation because that's the only thing he can do and the devil says this is exactly what i want and then he uses it to bring condemnation and the guy gets up and before man he's wonderful and he's struggling and the sister is struggling and they go back and keep doing it there are all kinds of atrocities happening in our churches pastors sleeping with members many things are happening everybody carries a nice cloth and we come and hide under this demon called religion hallelujah that does not mean we'll be lawless this is the balance again because some other people in an attempt to address this just like me they tell people okay fine don't be religious don't do this dress anyhow do what you want to do say anything so you can be in the church i can be preaching and a lady can just come and i'll just hold her give her a nice peck and say sweet how you look sweet and you sit down those cabbages will be part of what will exit out of the body of christ there is a lot of another dimension of imbalance are you getting my point now we have all kinds of carelessness. I believe that these things are not the things that determine salvation. But then there, there are some things that just don't make sense. A man of God comes hanging all kinds of chains around him with all kinds of rings, tearing his jeans, sagging them. I mean, I'm not talking of a guest, some a little youth meeting or boot camp. This is the, the, the default. He's the overseer of the ministry. He comes with his glasses, comes and all. That is nonsense. It's a spirit of seduction. Hallelujah. A woman comes on stage and she's preaching. Half of the message, the brothers are not following. Their minds are, they are just struggling. Lord, I will make heaven. I need to grow. This is another balance. So let me balance it very quickly. Because there are a group of immature revivalists arising in their bid to contain these things in the flesh are just telling people be as lawless as you can be that's a sign that we're out of the law there is a balance we're a disciplined army we're not idiots liberty is not rebellion hallelujah thank you jesus Second Corinthians 12 from verse 3 to 4. Did I say? From verse 3 to 4. Shibala kata brende kese baladaba. Verse 3. And I knew such a man, Paul speaking, listen please. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and had what? unspeakable words which are not lawful for men to what is that in your bible that means all these ones that people go have you not seen that many times when the apostles see revelation he tells them seal this is for an appointed time but now people come back with every message this is deception are you getting my point now there are a few people however 
who we have judged their revelations based on the integrity of God's word and we have found that their messages have brought healing and hope to the body of Christ for such kind of people we commend them and we endorse them but even at that point their word does not become the final the final uh, what do we call it now this thing that they yardstick I cannot begin to run my ministry after Mary Baxter's vision are you getting my point I've had a lot of visions I live in the realm of visions I can never run ministry just based on visions ask the leaders every time I see anything no matter how authentic the experience is the word of God must prove it not confirm it prove it prove it the Bible didn't say confirm all things. It said prove all things. If you are looking for confirmation, you will find it. You will find a scripture that endorses a man sleeping with a woman although they are not married. It's in the Bible. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak any language you want. The Bible did not say use the Bible just to confirm things. Prove it. Test the spirit behind it. Everybody now is looking for confirmation. So we get the revelation from all kinds of realms. That's the reason why you go to native doctors and the rest, you see Bibles there. Because since it's Bible you want, they keep it there for you. When it's time to do the spell, they say, lay your hands on the Bible and swear that you will be faithful. And you swear, but they will still do their demonic things. And you will be convinced that because there was a Bible there, it was God. Because of this deception. You don't use the Bible for confirmation. The Bible proves all things, yet nothing proves it. When I talk of Bible, I'm not just talking about the error of men. I'm talking about the edited spirit word that is given. Hallelujah. What do I talk about again? I want to show you something one other error in the body of Christ is neglecting the reality of spiritual laws I said it everybody say it after me both inside and outside spiritual laws abound they exist they are real as real as physical laws look at me do you know why God did not kill Cain when he sinned because he knew that there were spiritual laws at work are you getting my point and those laws will catch up with him are you following me now when you violate certain things and some things happen to you it's not like God brought it there are laws are you getting my point jump from this building now praying in tongues as you are jumping for no reason it's not like they threw you to destroy you that you expect you expect the hand of god just jump from it what do you think will happen to you because of the existence of a law now watch this regardless of that law a plane still moves is that true does the movement of the plane stop the fact that there is that law it means it's operating by another law that shields it are you getting what i'm saying curses are real yokes are real manifestations of witchcraft in lives and families are real they are very real listen these are spiritual laws what light does for us is to tap into what christ has done and exempt ourselves are you getting me let's look at one scripture and then we'll pray that does it for today just one scripture i want to show you a scripture psalm 64 let's trace these activities of those we call familiar spirits every time i teach it's always in my culture to try to bring balance there is a lot of junk about deliverance demonology and so on and so forth However, I believe that there is an accurate perspective that we can look at to gain understanding. Hear my voice, O oh God. This was the psalmist praying by revelation. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy too. Hide me from the secret 
counsel of the wicked from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity verse 3 hmm. who wet their tongue like a sword that means these guys speak certain things and bend their bows to shoot their arrows even bitter words verse 4 he said that they may shoot in secret at the perfect suddenly they do shoot at him and fear not verse 5 it says they encourage themselves in an evil matter they come they commune of lyingness privately they say who shall see them six they do what they sat out who are these people that search out they go to an extent where did they write it that they go back to archives and search out iniquities of families are you following me now this is in your bible they search out iniquities he said they accomplish a what diligent search they are meticulous when god opened my eyes to this it surprised me are you getting my point now have you read that word blotting out every handwriting so there are handwritings correct there are ordinances the bible says they search out iniquities hallelujah maybe at another time i will continue this teaching of these angels that i told you because when they fell listen they wanted to translate themselves back to the angelic state they did not know that god had the power to stop them so in an attempt to translate themselves back they were stopped they are the ones who have become demons today are you getting me so they need material bodies to find expression this is the basis of traditionalists this is the basis of a lot of things that we celebrate in the rampant outbreak of the prophetic that we call word of knowledge you see it they search out i'm not saying everything is corrupt are you getting my point now but i'm telling you that many of these things otherwise how can a herbalist look at you how many of you have seen these guys that scam and swindle people in a car and sometimes they will give you an they will take you to one baba right and give you an accurate word of knowledge how did they know because they don't have the holy spirit so there must be some spiritual system hmm. they search out iniquities it is on the basis of this search that lucifer satan the accuser of the brethren are you getting me now based on these findings this is what he reports and he says god according to your justice this is what has happened that means there is a law that should follow this family are you getting my point and suddenly you find out women are not getting married people are not getting married things are not working nothing is working anybody comes to you for a relationship what will happen to him in two weeks nobody will tell him he will pack his load by himself and go and you are wondering what in the world is going on listen listen it is demonic many of us and our loved ones are victims of these things but they've told you hallelujah just believe it's not there again you say it's not there again you went back it's still there this thing is following you you see patterns i told you this thing satan wants transgenerational allegiance many students you are very brilliant like exam right now you go to the class and you find out that you black out in all sincerity other people think you are lazy you know you are not lazy there is a puzzle somewhere you are trying to understand now you come to the ministers and they tell you did you read yes they say all right i speak over you it is well and demons just mock the men of god and say look at how shallow and the student goes back and gets the same kind of tragedy but when there is light darkness must bow this is the reason why you are hearing testimonies of sudden admissions sudden this and that see brothers and sisters 
I taught you that every time you speak, the realm of the spirit will check what revelation you are standing on. Are you seeing why some people's words are not powerful? Because when you speak, the devil knows you don't even know what you are saying. You are just carrying the delusion of faith. And you are just saying, I speak. Leave this family now. Based on what? What is the spiritual intelligence that sponsors that statement? When you have it, there is light in your spirit. And it is that light that will force that dimension of darkness. That's why sometimes you can see as we are teaching, the power of God just breaks out and demons are living. Or maybe during the miracle service, these things are not magic. It's a product of light. Are you getting my point? As you're sitting under this teaching now, a lot of things are suddenly coming in your mind. Are you getting me now? It's now making sense to you why your father was walking. Although an elder in church, he grew to a certain height and he fell. And that's exactly what has been happening. He went for deliverance and fell down. He got up and the same thing has happened with that. It has even gotten worse have you seen people who come and receive some miracles and go back and their families become worse it's a spiritual blackmail to discredit the ministry of the men of god so that they will say they got powers from darkness not everybody got power from that are you getting my point now you see how complicated the body of christ is at this point that's why we need accuracy please don't miss the meetings because there is a there is a construction there is a we want to go back to this foundation what is responsible for the darkness in our lives nothing just happens brothers and sisters as you're seated right now you know that this word you are hearing is the deliverance of your family this word you are hearing some of us who are parents here and are seated we know that this is the puzzle behind the things that are happening hallelujah but it will take light brothers and sisters it takes spiritual intelligence during the monday counseling i was ministering to a lady and as soon as she came and i casted out the spirit and at once the lady just lay down and the lord opened my eyes at once and i saw the spirit in the realm of the spirit it was laughing and i said the lord rebuke you the protocol were here and the, the lady jacked back up somebody would have said thank you jesus and he just get up say, ah, that's it and the demons would say kai men of god of these days they are not powerful at all say after me the light of god is upon me taking away every darkness and by the power of the Holy Spirit I become a, an agent of healing prosperity deliverance and grace to all around me and my family members hallelujah this is what is responsible for many things in our families this is why you find out that certain tribes and certain geographical places are prone to certain attitudes we say these things do not happen but we are seeing it there is a spirit upon the continent of africa that is responsible for what is happening hallelujah you see people come from certain places you see people come from plateau state you see people come from kaduna state from kogi state from lagos from the river and areas you see patterns that are happening yet we say oh it, there's there's nothing wrong i'm okay just declare that i'm okay and you say i'm okay and the demon say i'm fine too i'm fine with you i like this revelation you're having i'm fine with it but when light strikes see there are many of you based on this revelation you will start calling home and your parents will start telling you what is this dream that i'm having what is, you will see that there are shiftings know that is a response to what is happening it's already happening in some families right now you are seeing it you something you just know you can't explain but you know that certain foundations these demon spirits are saying who is this who is this this is le a level of light that is notable and they they begin to walk but you see 
light does not beg darkness authentic light comes and comes to conquer hallelujah this is the mystery behind this healing of hiv and all of these things you are seeing when you understand them no man of god will boast and brag in himself because in all sincerity when you know this it's just a proper application of spiritual intelligence hallelujah it's like clapping for yourself because you took your bath you say what i'm so impressed that i can bath what is special about that you can clap for a baby because you say this is amazing ha ah, you bath yourself the child will say yes say clap for yourself and he claps now imagine that Sam comes to see me and I just said I, I finished bath and Sam will say boy am I impressed a time will come what we celebrate as power will take another dimension what men of God have camped around it will be ordinary people who will be doing it because of the higher dimensions of grace are you getting me time for miracle service we'll just say you go and bring those who you heal delivered prayed for and come we testify together and receive greater grace do you know the training you are receiving now is such that it puts you to work immediately and your jerusalem is your family anyone who is not concerned about his family is, so, is a sign that something is wrong with you bishop a pretty lady with nobody to marry her get it into the 40s nobody to marry her people say it's just like that the ratio of men to women is so on and so forth what is all that but when you sustain spiritual intelligence you can say light be and it will become hallelujah praise the lord rise up on your feet let's pray i want us to take some time please pray as you pray tonight certain things will begin to happen in your life please everybody participate in the prayer as you pray tonight something will begin to happen in your families you will begin to feel the spiritual shift the devil must give up on you this year and your family members hold hands together and begin to pray in tongues please instrumentalists help us hold hands together and just begin to pray in tongues please pray seriously prayer is a spiritual law it has nothing to do with convenience you're not filled with the holy ghost as we pray let the power of god come upon you that you begin to utter those mysteries Please pray. You will contend until victory comes. You will contend. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Rekoto prekete leba kapa taka tabra gele balada dabas. Rekoto broska pakata leka tabra kete leka maka bresko prende kozeba. Every second lebo kosho prekele balada ba. Mabra tosko pa indekea. Egresko prekete leko tos maka prakata leko tos prekele balada ba. Meke broske talia ba. Arise. Arise by light, by revelation. Arise, shake up darkness, shake up darkness. Reketeko, prekete, leketeka. Pray and say, I'm changing. I'm changing. My status is changing. Reketeke, lebaha. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days the life God designed for me hallelujah the answer to 
but the tragedy of my family is already unfolding this age long puzzle is opening Come on, pray in the spirit. Activate breakthroughs in the spirit. You are praying out of a depth of revelation. This is no looking at one another. Pray, pray, pray. Your flesh may be weak, but pray is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Is a sacrifice. Prayer is a sacrifice. It's not about convenience. It's about the higher revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. You are going to pray. Hallelujah. And you are going to say, Lord, I dispel darkness out of my life. Are you hearing me? You are going to say, Lord, by the light, whatever represents darkness in my life, it bows tonight. Lift your voice and pray. It could be sickness in your body. It could be a yoke of bondage. Satan is only as powerful as the darkness in us permits him. Pray. Let light shine. God who had commanded light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts to grant unto us the knowledge of the glory of God as seen on the face of Jesus. Let there be light. 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 Prophesy. Light. Light to my family. Light. Prophesy. Light. To your exams light to your academics the powers that be they must bow tonight by the force of revelation man shall not live by bread alone man shall live by every revelation revelation brings life it brings light it brings power pray babylon is falling that corrupt system, that secrecy of evil, that genetic code of wickedness that is responsible for the life that people are living, the wickedness, the pain, cause that system, that that one must fall by a road of a higher priesthood. This is not the ironic priesthood. Our confidence is tied to a higher priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. It's a priesthood of glory. It's a priesthood of power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was he praying? You're going to mention every area of your life one by one and you're going to say lord the chains they are broken tonight while we sing play that song break every chain many of you will be surprised at the testimonies you will have these are not testimonies that are happening by mistake you know how they are happening so you can reproduce it in the life of others lift your voice chains i prophesy be broken Chains of delay, 
Chains of delay. Chains of barrenness. Chains of fear. Chains of failure. Let the glory of the Lord arise. Let the glory of the Lord arise. Chains. Chains of pornography. Chains of masturbation. Chains of wickedness. Chains of sickness. Chains of joblessness. Chains of failure. Chains of witchcraft. Break every chain. By the power of the blood of Jesus. Break every chain. We contend by revelation. We storm the gates of hell. We storm the gates of hell. By the power of light. We storm Babylon. We prophesy your doom in our lives. Babylon the great. Fallen. Babylon the great. Fallen. prayer points. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please pair yourselves into two. The Bible says, if any two shall agree as touching anything, you are going to pray for your families right now. This year, we must carry our family members along. Listen, listen. Pharaoh said, I will let you go, but leave the children and the animals. Moses said, no way. We are going together. I can't go and allow my sister. Who will save them? You can't go and let your loved ones die like that. Are you getting my point? That prophetic light will shine until every member of your family is part of this. You are going to pray. Confront every darkness in your family. You know the darkness. Lift your voice and pray. The darkness of witchcraft and culture. I contend. Come on, pray. There's no pretense in this place. Pray. Our family members have suffered this cycle of failure by the power of the Holy Ghost. We confront you knowing that we have authority. We expose the doers of evil. We expose the doers of iniquity. We expose the spirit of death, the spirit of failure, that invisible manifestation of darkness that is responsible for death, for barrenness, for miscarriages, for failure. Pray that limitation of poverty confront poverty that spirit that yoke that devilish device that has been projected to your family that is responsible for your financial tragedy confront it it must bow to the power of light for the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend Prophesy a recovery. Prophesy a recovery. I call back opportunities for my family. I call back. I call back their spiritual solvency. I call back their finances. I call back the joy. Hallelujah. One more prayer point and we're done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for Koinonia. We're going to say, Lord, let your light shine. People must be liberated. Are you hearing me? Let me tell you something. Listen. Hear me inside and outside. 
every one of you who comes for this meeting your coming alone is a miracle are you hearing me if you know the powers of darkness that if they had their way would stop you from hearing what you are hearing ask the people that come for counseling 90 percent of them tell you the morning for counseling something stops them or an accident and they almost capsize. the devil hates light he loves argument he loves religion but this year we are storming the gates of hell are you getting my point a fearless generation there are things that must be recovered there is the destiny the soul of the nation that we must recover but it must start from us and our families this is why we invest time to pray we know the kind of ministry god has given us that's why we pray are you getting my point that's why we have a strong and healthy prayer department we are not carried away by success we are not carried away by crowd we are not carried away by rema listen when god commits to you the transformation of the destinies of men you must take it seriously we are going to pray for koinonia we are going to say light shine shine let the works of evil be exposed let believers be empowered by the light of God's word. Let this place remain Bethel, the place of bread, the place of light. We will pay the price, whatever it takes to access the depths of the spirit. We will pay the price. We will pay the price for the sake of destinies. Pray. Our heavens remain open in the name of Jesus. This remains a place of breakthrough, a place of signs, wonders, deep mysteries of the kingdom. Our messages go far, they cause revivals in campuses, in families, in cities. Let the angel of the Lord that goes with our messages, we command that the angels of God arise for our sake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Before I make the altar call, let me speak over your life. We are committed to being very serious. I tell you, I was praying and I was telling God, I said, Lord, find seriousness in us. There's no room for joke. We will keep being serious. We will keep contending. While men slept, that means if you remain awake, you can be a pure breed indeed. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light. Awake. Awake. I want to pray. As I pray, I'm going to command every dead spiritual life, every dead prayer life, whatever has killed your spiritual fervency in the name of the son of the living god i pray for you that a fire will come upon you and reignite your prayer life in the name of jesus christ whatever has killed your prayer life i confront it now i command those dry bones arise Whatever has killed your appetite, let the fire of the Holy Ghost plant an appetite right now, right now in you for scripture. I impart the spirit of revelation upon you by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will have a passion to study scripture. You will get back your go 
Israelites. You will study scripture in the name of Jesus. I pray for access to light, access to the deep things of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, access to realms of power, realms of power, realms of breakthrough, realms of revelation. May your words be seasoned with fire. You will begin to speak from today. And fire, fire, fire. I prophesy it. I prophesy it. The Bible says from his mouth, a double-edged sword came out. I release that sword. Let it enter you and make you a living wonder. Let your communications be deep. In the name of Jesus. Those who are weary spiritually. Those who have come to the end of themselves. It's not backsliding. You've just tried. There is nothing else to sponsor a fresh hunger. I pray that tonight. God will show you something. That can keep you awake studying all night. That God will show you a mystery. Man de kaparika. May God remove the veil from your eyes. May you see what mortal men don't see. May you hear sounds of the spirit. I pray for utterance for you. The capacity to communicate spiritual things accurately. It's not about oratory. It's a spiritual quality that helps you translate spiritual things to the understanding of men. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I command every sick body be healed right now. Be healed. Every sickness here. Yeah. Be healed. You will walk away free tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for your exams. Whether you're writing exams or not, whether you're a student or not, lift your hands. You can connect. It's a corporate anointing. Hallelujah. There are people who have struggled with their exams. They've read and read right now as you are here. You don't even know if you are ready for your papers. But you know you are serious. Let's see the power that will stop you these exams. I pray for you. Kabagate preteke dabaladaba. Man te kam brendo se palakataya. That angel that came to give Daniel understanding, he said, And I am come to give thee understanding. Father, I pray, according to the measure of grace that has been given unto me, let your people receive super. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.